Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Mark with Kurt Bjorklund. The next little uh, story in Mark chapter 10 is the encounter between the rich young man. And this is one that's included in the different gospel stories. So we actually ultimately call this the rich young ruler because we get the different ideas from the different stories. And here it says, as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all of these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. I have said that in some ways, Mark 10 has these different questions that are posed by the text. In the Pharisees' interaction, it was, uh, how far can I go? In the disciples and the kids coming, people bringing him, who can I exclude? Or am I one of the insiders? And here the question is, what can I keep for myself. And so this young man comes up to Jesus. He says, I I want eternal life. And he's pretty impressed with his own resume and Jesus indulges it. And he says, he he says, okay, so here are all the, the, the standards. And the young man says, well, I've done all of these. I've done them since my youth. I've never broken a one. Jesus looks at him and it says, and he loved him. And I love that phrase here because often when you think of Jesus, although he got indignant with the disciples, he got indignant because they were trying to exclude, but he loves the person who's trying to understand and take a step. And, and this man, because he was loved by Jesus, was challenged by Jesus. And certainly a lot has been made of the fact that this is not a universal statement to go and sell and give to the poor. But what Jesus is doing is he's going after his one thing. He says, there's one thing you lack. And he's saying, he's saying, yeah, you may have done well with a lot of things, but you can't keep all the commandments. And so there's one place at least where you've excluded it. And this is the place where we come face to face with our need to understand who Jesus is and the man said, well, I'm not, I'm not willing to give this up. And so he's disheartened and he's sorrowful. And Jesus says, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed. And why were they amazed? Because this was a good, a good prospect. And he says, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Whether or not this was a reference to an actual gate or not is open to some debate. And it says, and they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it's impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. And then Peter goes into his statement, well, we've left everything. And he says, this is what we've done. And Jesus said, well, I want you to know that no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or children or lands for my sake, for the gospel will not receive a hundred times, hundredfold now in this time and in the age to come. And so Jesus' statement is, is when people ask me, what can I keep? His, His answer in some ways is, you can keep whatever you want, but my love compels me to challenge you because you can miss eternal life by saying I'm holding on to this and you can miss this amazing blessing because it says not just in this life, but um, also in Luke, it says in this life and in the age to come in the parallel. And, and so Jesus is, is saying, you can ask the question, what can I keep? But the, the, the real answer is, in a sense, nothing. But by keeping stuff, you actually lose because it is what you give to God. It is what you surrender to God that then he takes and multiplies in your life and in eternity. And so today my question is, 
kind of the question of the rich young man to you. What, what area of your life are you holding back and saying, I don't trust God with this? Because if I give this to God, for, for the rich young man, it was his wealth. If I trust God with this, then I, I don't know where I'll be. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't just push just for a second here on financial well-being. Uh, many people today are resistant to giving to God because they don't feel like they'll have enough. And yet here Jesus is saying, don't hold on because you're going to miss maybe the greatest spiritual blessing and even my blessings in this life by saying, I can follow you everywhere except here. And if that for you is money, it's sexuality, it's something else, this might be a day just to say, God, today I'll trust you with this area of my life. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.